Hi, in this video, we are going to talk about the process of glycolysis, which is a 10 step enzymatic process and a key aspect of the glucose metabolism. Before jumping into all of these 10 step enzymatic reaction, let us try to get an overview that why this pathway is important and which biological context or metabolic context it is important. So we know that we have many options in our diet like carbohydrates, protein, fat, etc. And this kind of give us the calorific input, right? And both protein and carbohydrate has a calorific value around 4, whereas fat has calorific value more than that. Now, if we have option for carbohydrate, our body would generally metabolize carbohydrate and use it as a primary source of energy. And the key raw material for glycolytic pathway is the glucose. Where does this glucose come from? From the dietary carbohydrate. Let's say you have it in a banana or a bread. So it would be digested in your intestine and ultimately inside your intestinal lumen, there would be cells, the intestinal epithelial cells, which would uptake the glucose or any monosaccharide form which has been uh, which has been there in the intestinal lumen after the digestion with the help of several transporter. For example, in case of glucose, the sodium dependent glucose transporter uptake the glucose. Now, once the glucose is in the bloodstream, it can enter several different cells depending upon which type of transporter is present in the cell. Now, let's say the glucose is inside of one cell and now let's see what is the fate of this glucose, how this glucose can be used by that particular cell to generate energy and that is the process of glycolysis. So, glucose would be converted to several intermediates and at this moment, let's just not bother about these intermediates. But let's say glucose 6-phosphate, glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate, these are few of these important intermediates. Ultimately, the fate of the glucose is to make pyruvate. Apart from pyruvate, there would be other products which would be produced in this glycolytic, glycolytic pathway, such as NADH and ATP. So already you can see the glycolytic pathway is important to generate ATP. Further, this pyruvate would be entering the mitochondria in format, format of acetate. And this acetyl-CoA can be used to generate ATP in format of Krebs cycle and then the electron transport chain. So we understand that how glucose could be utilized in glycolytic pathway, then the Krebs cycle and electron transport chain to generate ATP. But let's say our body is in, I mean, high supply of ATP and we have too much of ATP. At this situation, body don't need further production of ATP. So this glycolytic pathway is now channeled into different pathways in order to if i mean maximize the efficiency of these kind of pathways so the glucose 6-phosphate which is a glycolytic intermediate can be diverted into pentose phosphate pathway giving rise to nadph which would be further used in several anabolic processes such as fatty acid biosynthesis glucose 6-phosphate can also be converted or diverted towards glycogenesis pathway where glucose is converted to glycogen. I mean glycogen is the fixed deposit for glucose. Now glycogen would be stored in the muscle and liver. So depending upon the energy status of the body, this kind of uh, glycolysis reaction can be or the glycolytic intermediates can be diverted to several processes and that's how our body maximizes its metabolic uh, pathways depending upon energy demand. Now let's say in starved state, this same glycogen would be broken down from the muscle and the liver and that would be the primary source of energy. It would again uh, go into the glycolytic pathway and form energy. In fact, our brain uses glucose as a primary source of energy because fatty acid and protein cannot pass the blood-brain barrier whereas glucose can easily pass the blood-brain barrier and it and also ketone bodies can pass the blood-brain barrier and that's why glucose could enter the brain and work like a primary source of energy. Glucose undergoes glycolysis, Krebs cycle all inside the brain cells and give it energy and that's what keep us going, right? Now, in case of cancer cell, which are rapidly dividing 
and they shows uncontrolled growth, they have a urge to divide and they need huge amount of ATP for rapid division. And how does that ATP come? And imagine all these Krebs cycle and all these uh, ETC, all this can happen under aerobic condition. But in a tumor cell, which is deeply inside a tumor core, it is in a hypoxic situation, not getting oxygen from the blood vessels because the blood vessel might not be entering so deep inside the tumor. Under that hypoxic situation, glycolysis is the pathway which gives the tumor cell energy or the ATP, not these Krebs cycle or the ETC. So that's why tumor cell primarily depend upon the glycolytic pathways for energy. And this effect is known as Warburg effect. In different videos, we would be talking about this Warburg effect. So glycolysis is a key source of energy for rapidly dividing cells such as cancer cell. Apart from cancer cell, stem cells also use the same method to produce rapid energy and that really helps them to divide. Now, this is a 10 step process and several enzymes are involved in this process. So let's just not get into too much detail in the enzymatic uh, uh, reactions. So let's just first look at the important steps. Two steps you can see that ATP is invested or it's an investment where ATP is utilized and in later on ATP is generated in further two uh, steps, right? So these two steps are known as payoff phase and first two steps are investment phase. In the payoff phase, where 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate gets converted to 3-phosphoglycerate and phosphoenol pyruvate gets converted into pyruvate, these are known as substrate level phosphorylation because all of these cases ADP is converted to ATP taking the phosphate group from the substrates. About substrate level phosphorylation, we are going to talk about separately in a different video. But for now, we had a quick overview of glycolysis. So if you like this video, give it a quick thumbs up. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Thank you.